Well, praise the Lord. To God be the glory, great things he has done. Uh, we give the Lord thanks and praise for what he's doing and continues to do. And uh, thank you for joining us tonight. So tonight, we're going to jump straight into the word of God tonight. So get your Bibles. Before we begin, let us pray. Tonight is going to be a powerful session. And uh, I want you to join and share because tonight we're looking at the keys of the kingdom of God that's going to restore all things that the Lord has for us. Amen. This is a time of restoration. So I give the Lord thanks and praise. Thank you for joining. Johnson, please kindly share. I'm going to take just 10 seconds. I'm not going to wait because we started a little late tonight and we want to jump straight into the word tonight. My assignment is to uh, teach and preach and minister on the power of the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God is very real. Jesus is Lord of that kingdom. We're going to be giving you three or four pillars that are going to bring success to your life, your life and mine, and teach us on the greatness of the kingdom of God. And I want you to kindly share this quickly and uh, be a part. God bless you all. So, Father, right now we thank you for the word. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you for your grace. And Lord, tonight we give you all the glory, honor, and praise for you truly are worthy to be praised. Tonight we lift you up as we dive into the teachings of Jesus Christ. Lord, we declare your kingdom come, your will be done, manifested in our lives and in the lives of God's people here tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. It's such a delight to be here. I'm Dr. Kila Fokali. Uh, it's a pleasure to be in your presence. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for being with us. Uh, thank the Lord for my darling wife and family. Thank the Lord for Kingdom Apostolic Ministries International that gives us this opportunity. And Thursday night seemed to be the night that we are really on and sharing. So we're going to get right into this. We've come through a major storm and I am on fire. My family is on fire and everyone I'm touching with is on fire for the Lord. We know that Jesus is Lord. We declare his lordship and his kingship like never before. Tonight, we're going to talk more about Jesus Christ. Uh, and, and we'll see what the Lord does by his Holy Spirit to minister to some of you tonight. Minister by the anointing of the Holy Spirit and minister the word of the Lord tonight. Uh, we are focusing. My ministry is to focus on Jesus Christ. I'm a Jesus man. You know, especially going through this major hurricane and storm, I realized that all other things are just insignificant to the Lord Jesus Christ. He is Lord. He is God. He's the center of my focus. Uh, I've come back to my first love, Jesus Christ, and I'm loving on him like never before. I'm asking him daily to show me how to love him more, how to walk more intimately with him. And so that is my desire. I've been studying the word of God and looking for Jesus from the book of Revelation all the way back to the beginning of in Genesis. I've just been looking for Jesus and I've been finding him. And I've been finding peace at, before the storm, during the storm, and after the storm. So I give the Lord thanks and praise uh, for this opportunity to share. I bring greetings to you in Jesus' name. And to all you listening and watching, quickly jump on. My beloved, beloved, beloved Apostle Graves, I love him so much, a uh, mentor and a father figure in my life in the gospel. God bless you. Uh, Pastor Bevins, uh, Patrice, my dear, dear friend, uh, who uh, is such a blessing in my life. Uh, those Lee days, I thank God for you. Wish your mom a happy birthday for me. I saw it, so wish her a happy birthday. I wish I could have wish her that myself. And to all of you who are listening and watching, thank you for your love and your support and your prayers uh, for us tonight. And uh, my job is to lift up the people around here. And so pray my strength in the Lord. I'm being stretched as a physician. I'm being stretched as a in the psychiatry, neuropsychiatry, and doing therapy, I'm being stretched even at home. I'm being stretched in my faith in a good way. Just the Lord is just stretching me so that my capacity uh, to do more, to bless his people for such a time as this is in place. So we give Jesus all the glory, honor, and praise. Now let's just jump right straight into the word of God tonight. Quickly share that this is appropriate for everyone, regardless of our situation, where we are, you know, and this is important because we have partners and friends and ministry branches in all throughout Asia and all through the Middle East. 
uh, all throughout Africa, North America, Central South America, throughout the Caribbean. We have ministry branches there in Europe uh, and partners and friends in London and the UK. And so we want to thank the Lord for them. And so I try to bring a message from the Holy Spirit that is applicable to every aspect of where we are in the earth because the word of God is set. It is unshakable. It is powerful. It's unmovable. And it is truth, and that truth can be applied to anywhere in the world and get the results anywhere in the world. So I want you to grab this message tonight, hallelujah, and uh, get it into your spirit. So tonight we're talking about the kingdom of God, and we're going to look at some of the pillars tonight. The first pillar I want to look at is Matthew chapter 5, uh, verses 19. Praise be to the Lord. Amen. Um. Verse 18, let's go to verse 18. It says, For verily I send to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. This is Jesus speaking. Then he said, Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Well, we're going to start off with that first principle. First principle, number one, how to be great in the kingdom of God. Let me refresh you. The kingdom of God is the authority, the rulership, the dominion of Jesus Christ here and around the world. The kingdom of God is real. The kingdom, David, my good friend from Atlanta, Georgia, David Christ, that's my brother right there and his wonderful wife and children. I love you, brother. Uh, Jesus, uh, first principle is Matthew 5 and 19. That's where we're coming from. And uh, many people say, well, why are you always teaching the kingdom? Well, I'm going to show you now. I found that when I begin to teach the kingdom of God, share the kingdom of God, live the kingdom of God, everything I need, he begins to take care of me. You better get this message tonight. Some of you, you in Grand Bahama, you in Abaco, praise the Lord, I'm here. And we're going to need many, many miracles from the Lord. I'm telling you how to get your miracles. Don't believe a lie. Send this to 10, 20 people. Don't believe a lie. Because, hallelujah, uh, no, I mean, people are going to help us best as they can, but we need the Lord. We need a supernatural insight of the Word of God that's going to bring resources from the heaven of heaven where the Lord resides. We need the resources of heaven. We need access to heaven. We need the power of heaven. We need favor with the King Jesus in heaven to access everything we need for now. Now, this is faith talking now. This is faith teaching from the word of God, and it's going to take your faith. If you're not, if you're not faith thinking, if you're carnal, this is not for you. Click on somewhere else. But if you're going to be charged tonight by faith, if you're going to be charged by the word of God, by faith, taking what Jesus says as truth, let his word be truth and everything else be a lie. Let his word be truth. We're going to apply his word and everything else will be added. Well, I, you know, I'm believing God, praise God, here and, and on uh, in Grand Bahama that God is going to meet my needs even as I seek the kingdom. Why? What am I doing? Seeking the kingdom, preaching the kingdom, talking the kingdom, living the kingdom, studying the kingdom, understanding the kingdom, praying the kingdom. I'm not just kingdom focus. I'm not into that religion. I'm not into just, just the form and fashion of man. I'm into Jesus Christ. His lordship, his godship, his kingdom, and his rulership. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, after you come out of 200 mile per hour storm, ah, if you're in the kingdom, it shoots up a hundredfold. Hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, because I've seen waters rise. Hallelujah. And, and, and witness water rise 20 feet. Praise God. I got something to talk about. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If, uh, praise God. If it wasn't for the grace of God, I could have been a dead man now. If it hadn't been the grace of God and he didn't rebuke the winds and the waters and said, that's as far as you can go. Hallelujah. We would have been all washed away right now at this very moment. So I have a focus like never before. And my assignment is to help as many people, praise God, here and around the world get a focus on kingdom things moving away from the religion and the form and the fashion and peeling all of that stuff. When you come through life and that situation, you, you get a sense of peeling things off. What do I mean? Praise God. You get a new focus in life. Glory to God. You get a focus that, um, you know, the earthly things. The writer says, let's lay aside 
uh, the things that easily beset us, lay it aside, the sin and anything that hinders us. You know, after a storm, a category five, the largest in the Western Hemisphere recorded in history, up to 200 miles, they had to create a new scale. It probably wasn't a five. It's probably like a broadcaster here says probably it was a 10. But praise God, your focus in Christ comes up or you go further away from him. So I decided to go forward with him. And so uh, Jesus talks about this. He says, Matthew 5 and 19, get a kingdom perspective on life. Get a kingdom understanding of things. And, and so things will be added to your life. And in this verse, Jesus is talking about obeying the commandments of the word of God. Now I'm going to tell you right now, we if this is a window period. We're just two weeks out of a storm. But guess what? This is a window period. The Lord is looking and checking our hearts to see if we're going to align our hearts. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. With the laws of God, having a prayer service and all that is just wonderful. Praise God. That's the beginning. But we got to check our lives. Every citizen, every person, every church to see if we're lining our lives up to the commandments of the Lord. Because Jesus said, if you live by my commandments and you teach others to do it, you shall be great in the kingdom of God. How many people want to be great in the kingdom of God? I sure do. What about you? But he also said you will be least if you tell people to violate this or you don't tell people about the kingdom of God. Well, you know, every day I'm sharing with people and they're coming to know Jesus Christ as Lord. Amen. Yes, I'm practicing medicine, but I, I, I listen, I'm putting some things into eternity. What am I doing today? We just shared and some young men just listen and, and just reconsidered coming to the Lord and one gave their heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. And this weekend we had about 10 or 12 who gave the heart to Jesus Christ. Pray for me because we're sweeping up the remnant. What am I doing? What are we doing? We're touching lives and we're calling them back to Jesus. Amen. We mightn't be able to give them a sofa or a car or, or all of those things. So we try to give them some things as we can. Praise God because the ministry is holistic. We try to touch every aspect of the human life. But I'm telling you, even after you give them uh, earthly food, you still got to feed them the word of God, which is the bread of heaven. Glory to God. So the first point we looked at is Matthew 15 and 19, which says, um, uh, Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach man so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven. Where is the kingdom of heaven? The place where Jesus lives. The real place where his government and his throne, where he's seated. He is seated there as our chief intercessor. He's our high priest. He's the bishop of our soul. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. Read Hebrews 12 and 13. That You can go over that later on. He is seated there making intercession, intercessions on behalf of us, petitioning us for us as a high priest before the eternal father. It is the place of heaven. It is the place where the angels, according to Revelation 12 and 13, where they are worshiping Revelation 4, night and day crying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come both now and forever. And the 24 elders, uh, they are bowing down and worshiping and the seraphims and the cherubims, these forms of angels are worshiping before the throne of God all through eternity. And the created beings, my God, read Revelation. It is loaded with what's going on in heaven. And so in the kingdom of heaven, even though we are physically here, wherever you are in the world that you are watching, if you are in Christ Jesus, the Bible says you are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. If you receive that by faith, so many believers are living beneath their spiritual authority because they don't understand from the word of God. I love prophetic ministry on these social media, but I want the word of God. Praise God. If I just get a prophetic word, that's just going to last me for a period of time. I love prophetic word. I'm going to prophesy to some people. I prophesy to many by television, radio, one-on-one, -on -one, through the word of God, through preaching for many years now. So I know the prophetic, but I love the word of God. Because he said, if Jesus said, but whosoever shall do and teach the commandments... The same shall be called great in the kingdom. Do you want to be great in the kingdom? Teach the commandments of the Lord. Teach the word of God. Teach the law of God. 
in season and out of season. Put it on your mind. Put it on your lips. Talk about it in your house. Talk about it at your table. Talk about it in your bedroom. Talk about it when you get up. Talk about it when you go to sleep. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're coming back to the word of God. Focus. So many believers as I've been looking and praying have lost their focus. There's so many things in this life that is such a distraction. And you know, I'm happy the storm is off. Since the storm has been gone now, it's two weeks. I haven't looked at a television. Hallelujah. I, I haven't even, oh God. Have you listened to a radio station? Hallelujah. And I don't miss it. And I'm not saying you have to do it, but praise God. Hallelujah. You don't miss it. I've just been spending time with the word of God and with him and with family and, and calling out and still doing what he's called me to do. Be a blessing to my city and for the kingdom of God. To God be the glory. Amen. What am I saying? All of these things are a distraction. But the Lord is calling us back to his commandments. Amen. Let's turn our Bibles down to Matthew 11. Let's flip over. The next principle we're going to be looking at is how to be great, how to move into power. And I'm giving you some keys to the kingdom of God to prosper your life tonight. Amen. These are tested and proven. Matthew 11 and verse 11. Now, this is your second point now. Jesus said in Matthew 11 and 11, Verily I say to you, among them... That are born of women, there had not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm going to let you think on that for a minute. Praise be to God. Jesus is saying, praise God. Jesus is saying that John was great. How many know that John the Baptist was great? I've been drawn was um, um, you know born supernaturally uh, to, to 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 his parents and and John grew up and he you know consecrated his whole life ha took a vow to the Lord where his hair locks could not be touched and his parents were priestly in the temple in the house of God and I'm telling you that uh, John saw supernatural miracles. John began to preach the repentance and began to preach the kingdom before Jesus even start. John began to preach the kingdom of God. He began to preach in, in Jerusalem. He began to baptize in the river Jordan. He was the one who baptized Jesus Christ himself. He was so powerful that he baptized Jesus. He saw the heavens open and a dove descended on Jesus. And he said, you are the son of God. And he heard the voice from heaven say, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. John was the same one. The Baptist was beheaded. His neck was decapitated. He was beheaded for preaching the gospel and telling uh, Herod that he couldn't have his wife's brother's wife. But the same John the Baptist is said by Jesus now. Here is it now. Jesus, who is the half-cousin of John, came back and in Matthew 11 and 11 says that John was great. He acknowledged that John was great. But he said, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than John the Baptist. Praise God. Now, John was the greatest prophet, Jesus said, among all prophets. I want you to get this tonight now. John was greater than Elijah. John was greater than Daniel. John was greater than Noah. John was greater than all of the, 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 the prophets before time. But John, according to Jesus, when it comes to us now in this dispensation, John is least or less than us if we are in the kingdom of heaven. Praise God. I want you to get that. Jesus is saying, if you come into the kingdom of God, you come and you walk in the power of God, you make Jesus your Lord in this dispensation of the church, your ministry, my ministry, my authority, your authority will be greater than John the Baptist. And John was greater than all the prophets of old. That means you and I in the kingdom of God today, if we understand our spiritual authority, if we understand our place in God, will be greater than some of the Old Testament prophets. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. I'm talking to you in 
Bhutan, I'm talking to you in India, I'm talking to you in South Africa, I'm talking to you in Nigeria, I'm talking to you in the Bahamas, I'm talking to you in Jamaica, I'm talking to you in North America and Canada, I'm talking to you in the jungles of South America, the Himalayan mountains of um, Asia. I'm telling you, regardless of where you are, if you understand who you are in the spirit, it doesn't matter if you have clothes, it doesn't matter if you have food, it doesn't matter your social economic class, it doesn't matter your race, your color, your nationality, your, your financial position. If you understand who you are in Christ Jesus, you are greater than John the Baptist, according to Jesus in Matthew 11 and 11. Read it. Praise God. Go over it and check it. Challenge me on it if you see something else. So if I'm greater than John the Baptist, my miracles can be greater. My favor can be greater. Your favor should be greater. Your, uh, your walk with God should be greater. Your walk with Christ Jesus should be greater. The supernatural on your life should be greater. The provision on your life should be greater. Praise be to the name of the Lord. I'm only going on what the word of God says. Jesus go on in Matthew 11 and 12. And from the days of John the Baptist and turn loud, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent take it by force. Praise God. The kingdom is advancing. The kingdom is increasing. How is it going to increase more and more when you and I Get into the kingdom of God. Get out of religion. Get out of form and fashion and just talks. Get in the word of God. Find your authority in the kingdom. Find your place in the kingdom. Bring your family into the place of the kingdom. Talk the kingdom. Preach the kingdom. Pray for God's kingdom to come into the earth in the name of Jesus and demonstrate his power in the earth around the world in the name of Jesus. All right, I think you got that. Let's, next, let's move on. Matthew chapter 18. Next principle in the kingdom of God. How to walk in your greatness. How to receive the greatness of the Lord. Amen. God bless you. Matthew chapter 18. Hallelujah. Jesus was asked the same question. And I'm going to answer that now. Who is great in the kingdom? How do you be great in God's kingdom? Many people won't have a pulpit. So if you're waiting on a pulpit to preach, to be great, I'm sorry. Many will never have an opportunity to minister in front of one person, a 50, 50,000, 100,000. That doesn't necessarily make you great. That's a great opportunity, praise God. But Jesus is going to tell you how to be great in his eyes. You know, you, you got to be careful now because, you know, uh, praise God, depending on where you are in the world, if you're looking at a certain model from any other country, it might not work. You, you'll be discouraged because you might not sing before crowd of thousands. The Lord might just give you a hundred to share with, but if you obey him, you'll be great in his eyes in the kingdom of God and receive a greater reward than someone who probably signed before a hundred thousand. It's not in the numbers. Praise God. You might be in an environment where you got 50 people saved to know Jesus and according to your assignment and your purpose, that makes you great in the kingdom of God. I'm glad many are denouncing this prosperity gospel. Some of you are going to be millionaires for the kingdom of God, and some of you won't. Doesn't Your finances doesn't make you greater or less than the kingdom of God. Now, do I believe God puts poverty on people? No. If you're in God's kingdom, you can have all. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. Some of you, based on your assignment, some of your assignment is going to be to reach the world, Praise God. With the gospel, God's going to give you lots of resources. Some of you, he's going to call you to build missionary works and nations. He's going to bless you greatly. Some of you have hospitals. Some of you have clinics. Some of you have food provisions that you have to provide for around the world. That, that's praise God. Some of you just are going to be in your local assembly and serve for the next 50 years. That's just as great in the kingdom of God as everyone else. To God be the glory. And so we, we, we have to restructure our mind. You know, it's not a show. It's real. This is Jesus speaking. And, and, and some of you are great in the kingdom, don't even know it. Some of you are listening, watching the favor and the hand of God is on your life, praise God. And you're looking at someone else on TV or radio or someone else on social media and comparing yourselves and never feel good and sufficient enough for God to use you. Because you're looking at someone's 
flyer on Facebook and feel, my God, they're doing so many great things for the Lord. Well, maybe you're just a great father at home. Maybe you're just a great mother taking care of your children. Maybe you're just a great wife supporting your husband. That's great in the kingdom of God. Be faithful in that. Be great in that. Pray in that. Worship in that. And abide, the, by, abide by the word of God in that. And you will be great in the kingdom of God. God will rise you up in greatness. He will open the door for your greatness. He will meet your needs. And he will turn things around for your life in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I hope you're getting this tonight. If you're getting that, somebody shout amen. Say amen. Say something that I know you you with there. My dear son in, in, uh, in Asia, Karti, good to see you. God bless you all the way. In Asia, I don't want to say some of the countries for safety reasons. Uh, but Matthew 18, verse 1, at that same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Praise God. You know, as you look at television and radio and all the media, you know, I sometimes wonder who is great from who's not great. You know, because you could come across some people who are very arrogant. I mean, you, God, God I hate arrogance. And God hates pride. We're going to look at that. That's the next principle. I'm jumping ahead of myself. But the Lord loves humility. And, you know, you could come across some people, even during this time, who are giving away items and food and, and they just hyping up themselves. Hallelujah. Everything they do, they got to plaster it on social media. Every, every gift they give, every item they give, it's plastered all on social media. Why? To receive greatness. No, you don't get greatness from humans. Man, if God, you know, if humans make you great, then God calls you small. Hallelujah. Because if you're friends with the world, you're enemies with God. Some people, they just love everyone to give them a pat on the back. Hallelujah. If you're like that, you need a humbling because God can't use you fully, amen? You're using his glory. You're in the way of his glory. You want to be great on yourself, amen? You're not going to be great from boosting your numbers on social media. I preach the word of God. Whoever wants to sign on, praise God. I have no tactics to increase and boost the numbers. If you want to share it, praise God. If you don't want, I'm building my greatness in the kingdom. I'm carrying out my assignment, which is the kingdom of God being preached around the world, Hallelujah. This is one other platform. I have multiple others. To God be the glory. I, whoever watches it, to God be the glory. When I'm finished, I give the Lord praise and I go and spend time with my family because I'm going to complete what God says for me to do, for him to make me great in him, in the spirit, and in due time and in season, he will bring me to the place of total favor. Praise God. And that's what he wants to do in your life. But if you push it and you, you, you try to make man love you, you want everyone to love you, you want everyone to receive you, you want everyone to accept you, well, praise God, you, 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 you exalting yourself. And when you exalt yourself, God is going to bring you low. But when you humble yourself, the Lord will exalt you. How do I know? Matthew 18, verse 1. They asked Jesus, who's great in the kingdom? Then Jesus said in verse 2, And Jesus called a little child unto them and set him in the midst of them, and said, Verily I say unto you, except you be converted and become as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever, therefore, shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Now, now Jesus said this. You know, Jesus hates pride. You know, before, before you fall, pride is always there. Anytime before there's destruction, there's pride. Now, now you could take your theology, you could apply it to any country. I'm not talking about this circumstance. I'm not saying it's, it is. I'm not saying it's not. But I know one thing. Before destruction comes, there's always pride. Before the fall, there's pride. Pride is the thing that brings judgment of God. God hates pride. You know why God hates pride? Because he is a holy God who created everything. He made us. This bread is ours. We don't control the ticking of our heart. We don't control the electrical impulse in our brain. We don't control our speech, our sound, our body, function internally. Hallelujah. You can affect it, but you don't control it. And so for you to be stuffed up and arrogant... In the church, God hates spiritual pride most of all, I believe. He hates when you people parade around. He had a problem with the Pharisees and the Sadducees, you know. These ones who walked around with robes, who couldn't talk to folk. You know, and some still acting like that. Praise God. I, I mean, you, you can't even talk to people. 
My God, you can't come down and say, how are you, brother, sister? Because see, folk believe because they're in the pulpit or they have a big church or they have a big ministry or they're bishop or they're some title ministry that makes them greater than the people they're serving. Well, that's man's system. That's a demonic structure to feel that because you're the pastor, you're the greater one. Well, Jesus is going to tell you because you're the pastor, you're the least because you're the servant. So Jesus said, unless you humble yourself, you will not be great. But if you humble yourself, I'm praying today for this country and everyone listening and watching, you as leaders, you as saints of Jesus Christ, humble yourself. Some people say humble. Some people say humble. Whatever you want to say, lower yourself before the Lord. Bring yourself down before the Lord. Acknowledge he is God. Acknowledge all your health and your strength and your ability. Right now, Grand Bahama, we need the Lord because there's no hope other than the Lord. And if we don't pray and humble ourselves and walk before the Lord, we're going to be in trouble. Whole country, wherever you are around the world, if you're a minister, humble yourself. If you're a believer, humble yourself. If God has blessed you to, with a gift or an ability, walk humbly. Walk humbly before the Lord. Recognize it's his gift. It's his anointing, his word, his spirit. I hate pastors saying, my church. You didn't build any church. Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. If it's your church and it ain't Jesus' church, then Jesus has no obligation to protect it. All right? So it's not man's church. How does it get your church? God's people give the tithe and offering. God's people, hallelujah, uh, come to it. God's people sing in it, pray in it, fast in it. God's people bought the chairs, the fans, the idol. I don't know of any pastor in the world who paid for everything in the church. And if they did, they don't pay for God's people. God's people come there. And if they did, they didn't. They didn't create this book called the Bible with the word of truth and the word of life. And if they did pay for everything, they didn't pay for the anointing to heal, deliver, and cast out demons, preach the word with power, that people come into salvation, that people are baptized by water, that people come into the fellowship of the church. They didn't pay for the blood. They didn't pay for the cross. They didn't pay for Calvary. They didn't pay for the resurrection. They didn't pay for heaven. They didn't pay for hell. Praise God. You got my picture. So humble yourself, man. When you humble yourself, Jesus said you should be great in the kingdom of God. I think you got that. I'm going to move on. Matthew chapter 23. Then I'm going to be praying for some people and ministering the word of the Lord quickly. And then we're going to call it a night for tonight. Matthew chapter 23. Next point we're looking at. How to be great in the kingdom. How to walk in kingdom power. How to live this kingdom life. What are the principles for living this life in the kingdom of God? Praise God. That's what I'm dealing with tonight. Matthew chapter 23 verse 11. It's my next scriptural point. All of these came from what Jesus said, by the way. Twenty-three, verse ten. Let's go up to verse ten. It says, "Neither be ye called masters, neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ." Now, if you're going to walk in the power of God, you need to call only Jesus. Jesus is saying in Matthew 23, 11. Go back over this. Go back over this. Matthew 23 and 10. Call no one master. Only Christ Jesus is your master. Only Christ Jesus owns us. Only Christ Jesus we should take direct orders from. For our lives. Now, if you're in a workplace, of course, you, you listen to your leadership. You work with your organization, and, and with that organization, you, you listen to what the leadership say in according to what the Word of God says. I mean, even if your organization tells you to do something that's immoral, you have a legal and spiritual right to say, no, that violates the commandment of God in my life. I will not lie. I will not teeth. I will not uh, perform this illegal, ungodly, unrighteous procedure. It goes against my spiritual laws, commandments of which I build my fate on. Because Jesus is your master. He, You know what master means? The one who owns you. Take that for a minute. Jesus doesn't only own your life. Hallelujah. He owns your spirit. If you give him lordship of your life. If you made Jesus Christ your lord and master and savior. Then he has full authority over you. And what we're doing from now until the rest of the, this life. Is learning how to 
let Jesus' word and his voice direct us every day. Do you know that you can be directed in everything you need? Hallelujah. There's no shortage of anything in this earth. If you will go to Jesus, if you will look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith, many times we look too much to man and to woman and to people to be our source. Man is not your source. They can be a type of your source. The Lord can touch a man or woman, boy or girl to be a blessing to your life. But they're not your source. Jesus is your source. Look to Jesus. Because sometimes you're serving Jesus. I have many examples. Living for the Lord. The people who I thought were going to help me were not the ones who actually helped me sometimes. Some of the people, the Lord didn't allow certain people to help me. It was some unexpected people, unexpected places where God, through his own Holy Spirit, allowed the blessing to come. People of God, listen to me. You might be expecting miracles and favor from one way. But do you know that the Lord has millions of ways to bless you? If you look to man, you're going to fail. But if you look unto Jesus, you don't know which direction the blessing is going to come in. You just hold your faith. You hold a faith of expectancy. You believe the Lord. You trust Jesus Christ. And you know every morning I'm going to wake up. He's been feeding me, clothing me, sheltering me, providing for me. Praise God. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter. Last year, the same thing the year before. As long as I keep trusting him, he's providing for me and my family every single day. Not by man, whoever he uses. Praise God. I give him the glory. I don't have to give the man the glory, the woman the glory, the place the glory. It all the glory goes to Jesus. You know why God wants to bless you through many different ways? So you don't get stuck on a man or woman. That you don't feel obligated as some pastor. Honor your pastor, but praise God. Let the God of your pastor bless you. The God of your bishop bless you. The God of your apostle bless you. He blessed you through the word of God. Hallelujah. I've seen food and provision. It's not from a pastor or organization. It's the Lord who provided it. Praise mm -hmm. God. And he just used some people as the channels. Praise be to the Lord. Let me move forward. But Jesus said, verse Matthew 23, verse 11, but he that is greatest among you, shall be a servant. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. Praise God. Jesus is saying, hallelujah, when you humble yourself, you shall be great. But if you lift up yourself in pride and arrogance and think it's your favor and your goodness because you're smart, because you're educated, because you're from a good family, because how much money you make, because people like you, because you have a, a big ministry, a big church, you think that's the reason God gave that to you, loaned it to you, but you got caught up in it. You got caught up in your career. You got caught up in your fancy car. You got caught up in your big houses. You got caught up in your, 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 your giftedness. You exalted yourself in pride. And God has a way of bringing down the prideful and the humble. Bringing down the prideful and lifting the humble. If you're going to make it in this season, you're going to have to be humble. I'm going to close up right now. Matthew 6 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Praise God. God wants to add all things to you if you seek his kingdom, if you seek his righteousness. Let's pray. Father, right now, I thank you for this word tonight. I pray for everyone listening and watching. I pray that you touch the hearts of your people, that you minister to your hearts of your people listening right now, that you give them hope. What is that hope? They can be great in the kingdom, that you will provide all things according to your kingdom. If they seek the name of Jesus Christ, Christ and seek the king, all things shall be added unto them. How do we know? One, they must humble themselves, Lord. Seek your face and you're going to provide. If they seek the kingdom of God and your righteousness, everything we need shall be added. Lord God, if you want to be great in the kingdom, we're going to put aside our selfishness and selfish greed and we're going to serve others. We're going to serve others as we begin to serve. Hallelujah. As you begin to serve, you're going to open up channels of favor and goodness. How do I know? As you begin to call people and pray, as you begin to lead people into the prayers, pray 
presence of the Lord, as you begin to usher people in the presence of the Lord, as you begin to tell people about the Lord Jesus Christ, as you lead them to salvation in Jesus Christ, as you serve the poor, as you feed the hungry, as you clothe the naked, as you give your gifts to the body of Christ, and in this time to any organization that is helping people, as you be a neighbor to your persons around you, as you help people, the Lord is going to channel favor and grace and blessing on your life. As you help others, God is going to help you. As you bless others, God is going to bless you. As you love others, God is going to love you. Feed somebody, clothe somebody, but most of all, tell them about the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Lead them into a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and let them know that he is the one who died on the cross, shed his blood rose from the dead and is seated in heavens. Hallelujah. And he's coming back again very soon. As you let people know that and you live that and I live that, all the things that we need shall be added unto us. We shall be great with him. We will sit in our place of authority. And through the word of God, you will know who you are. I bless God for you. I speak the blessing and the favor of God upon you. I speak open doors to some of you tonight. Even as you receive this word, God is about to touch five of you right now. God is about to touch you. I want you to go back to this teaching. Go back and listen to this teaching. Get this teaching in your hearing. Share it. Share it, please. Somebody needs to hear it. Not for the numbers, but I want people to hear this word of the Lord. I'm praying the blessing of the Lord. We shall be restored. I shared with my wife tonight. Look what God did in two weeks. And the Lord spoke to my spirit and said, if I did this in two weeks, what do you think I'm going to do over the next month? I hear complete restoration for the city. I'm driving around. I'm seeing restoration. If some of you listening or watching, God is going to restore your life, restore your home, restore your family. It might not be the the same things in the same way now. Hallelujah. Some of you lost some stuff um, and God said, all right, some of those things are not coming back the same way, but he's going to put something in your heart. What is that? He's going to put a love for him like never before. He's going to put a love for your family. He's going to put a love for you. You're going to forgive people. Some of you need to forgive some people for the Lord to restore you. Some of you need to love some people for the Lord to restore you. Some of you need to get back to church. Hallelujah. Some things that happen, you got to get back to the house of God. You got to get back to the service of the Lord. You got to get back to your walking with the Lord. Hallelujah. Crisis and storm comes uh, and the Lord uses it to bring you close to him if you want to. Hallelujah. Some people can go through this thing and miss God completely. I see some people went through the storm and they buy the bar drinking. They're cussing. They're fighting in the food store. They're doing all kind of things. Some, a small portion, not everyone. Do you know you could come through something major like this and still miss God? And so I challenge you to make Jesus Christ your Lord, to seek him, to seek his kingdom, seek everything related to his word. I've shut down everything and every day I'm just eating up the word of God with my family like never before. I'm worshiping like never before. I'm singing like never before. I'm praying like never before. I'm loving my family and loving others like never before. I'm touching everyone wherever I go for the glory of Jesus Christ. That's my assignment. Don't look at me. You do your assignment according to what he called you to do. Praise God. But I could encourage you in the Lord. Hallelujah. And if I don't encourage you, praise God. This is for the other leaders around the world that we serve as leaders with uh, in Kingdom Apostolic Ministry. Praise God. If you're being blessed tonight, I want you to watch more of this on Power and Glory TV. Honey, my wife will put that there, Power and Glory TV. You can also go to Kingdom KingdomAmgBahamas.com. Go to our website and see what we're doing. Hallelujah. Continue to pray for my wife and I and family as we pray for you. If you have any special prayer requests, please private message me. I will pray with you sometime. Or if you want to put it here tonight, we'll pray for you tonight. God bless you all the way from Grand Bahama, Louise, my dear brother in the Lord. God bless you. Hallelujah. My aunt Chanel, God bless you. Minister Keith, a mighty man of God. Praise God. Go to Power and Glory TV. That's a 24-hour television network that's uh, reaching around the world. You can also watch us on Dominion TV and KI TV. But go to powerandglorytv.tv, sign up and watch more powerful kingdom teachings. Hallelujah. If you want to be a part of that growing family, contact me, private message me. We love you so much. I want to see you around the city, touch you, pray with you, share with you uh, as you pray for me. We love you. God bless you. See you again on Sunday in the will of the Lord where we'll be continuing the word of the Lord. I'm preaching and teaching like never before. Join me and pray with me as we uh, get the word of the Lord out here and around the world with our partners. We're in 40 nations around the world. And um, 
that number is growing. We have a powerful apostolic network. When you go to our website, you'll see more on that in the name of Jesus. So God bless you. We love you. Shalewa and I, she's online here tonight with us. Send love to you. And we say God bless you, Sammy. God bless you, Louise. God bless you, all of you. Good night. Share this. Go back over this teaching tonight. How to be great in the kingdom. How to see the provision of the Lord come to you even in a time of famine. You abide by these pillars of the kingdom. You shall be blessed. God bless you. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen.